to help you dominate the social dilemma. I like that title, and that's what's going to be whacked on to this. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Coach Malik Show. My name is Malik Benin, and I am going to be your virtual coach. I'm going to give you the knowledge, the tips, and the advice to help you perform better in all aspects of your life. We are live. What's going on, guys? I believe we are live. Coach Malik here. Today's video, we are going to talk about social dilemma and how we can fix and do things to help us not be a slave to this. So there is a, I'm going to wait a little bit. Uh, if you're watching on replay, let me know on replay. Uh, could have done a little bit on the intro, but it's okay. This is my time to let people come on. Um, I usually wait till about a minute and a half. So we'll wait for a minute and a half and then we'll start the show or start the video. But basically, if you watch The Social Dilemma, you have seen what this phone and social media does to us. And, um, you know, I just wanna talk about it a little bit. This is a health fitness uh, page. And so I wanted to talk about it, you know. Um, just again, still waiting for people to get on here. Stall in here. I got a new heat lamp. Um, if you guys can see this, I'll couch my little heat lamp it was getting a little cold winter season um it was getting a little breeze and <laughs> uh, i was getting cold so i got the heating lamp um heat dish it's called heat dish and uh getting a little warm here i could feel on the side of my face just kind of heating up uh before we talk about the social dilemma here um but yeah say hi again if you're watching on replay watch tell me on the comments watch on replay and it is now a minute 30. We will get into it. But I was talking to my uh, friend the other day, and we're talking about the social dilemma. We're talking about the, um, and if you haven't seen the social dilemma, uh, dilemma, it is a documentary on Netflix that pretty much uh, explains he, the guy who made the documentary worked before for Facebook and um, programmer. And basically what he did was explain how social media is used towards people and how our attention is being sold. Um, you know, because all these platforms are free, but are they really free? You know, they use our time, they use our uh, attention, and they're selling us stuff because they're selling our information to other companies to sell us stuff. So it's, it was this whole documentary, pretty cool. What me and my friend were talking about, though, was that all the documentary did, which is, you know, understandable, it's the beginning of social media. If you guys think about the internet, you know, when they thought it was gonna collapse in 2000, it's very new. It's like 20 years old, at least the new internet, like this internet, it's 20 years old. And it's like, can't even drink yet. Like in America, can't even, it's not 21 yet. Like it's so young. So just thinking about that, you know, thinking about what it's gonna look like in a hundred years and 400, like some of these things have been here for what, hundreds of years, right? Even just companies itself. Um, you know, monuments, homes, houses, buildings. So you just imagine the internet being here in a hundred years and stuff like that. It's crazy to think about, but um, it never gave any solutions. It just passed on the problems. It just, which again, it was good, but just made everyone aware about the problems, freak out, get anxious. But it didn't really come up with any solutions besides like people saying, don't do it at all. Um, where I want to come on and talk about a couple solutions for you guys to help you with the addiction of the phone. Now the thing about addicting, addiction to the phone, you know, I know a lot of people don't like to say that they're addicted to the phone. I'll say I'm addicted to the phone. It's just, it's a net, it's chemicals. It's chemicals in our body. So we open up our phone or we get a notification, we open up Instagram, we open up Facebook and get a, a little red circle with a number in it. We get excited. It's just, it's chemicals. So, being that being said, what we need to do is control the chemicals, that that reaction, that that uh, you know they say in habits. There's a trigger, and then you do the habit. We gotta stop that trigger, you know, from keeping us going on it, and you know, putting our. Have you ever done this? Have you ever done this? You're on Instagram, let's say you're on Facebook, one of the two or whatever. You close the app, you put the phone in your pocket, and two seconds later, you take it out, you open it, and go back to that app. And you're, I was just here like unconsciously you do that or you're in the app you get out of it and then just you go to the next app because we do our whole like 
check Facebook. All right, let's get out of it. Let's check Instagram. Let's get out of it. Let's check Snapchat. Let's get out of it. Let's check Twitter. Let's get out of it. How many times have you got out of an app and then we went right back into it? How many times have you got out of an app and then we went right back into it just out of habit? Out of habit, comment down below. So I'm going to give you a couple tips on how to help you with solutions to do this. Number one is turn off all notifications. Number one is turn off all notifications. The only notifications I personally have on myself are my phone calls, obviously. Mind body performance, because that's what I do is my work, my online clients. So when they message me, I get notified. Not my iMessages. That's why I always tell people to message me. I tell my client, message me in the app because I don't get notifications for text. So if I reply to you slow in text, that's why. Only on my body performance and my, my Google Calendar because I'll sometimes put events in there or um, calls or something and it'll, it'll remind me of that. Those two, besides, and the call and the, and the phone ring. My Google Calendar, which I'm able to put stuff in to remind me, not somebody else putting stuff in there to remind, to notify me to see what they're doing, just my stuff. And my body performance, my clients, you know, I'm, I'm there for them if they need me, whatever. Pick your one to three apps. Pick your one to three, five max apps to have no, notifications for. Work should be one of them. You know, calendar should be one of them if you're if you if you use your calendar. Um, texts are fine because I know a lot of people aren't always texting um, a lot of people. I do it for business, so I get a lot of spam. But yeah, by the way, quote me on this: text will be gone. You're not going to text people, I believe, in a couple years. Maybe not a couple years, but in like, how what email's doing right now, everyone hates email, no one's emailing anymore. I think text, texting will do that in the next 10 to 20 years, um, personally, because I'm already getting spam and I'm already getting sick of text messages. Uh, do you guys get spam on text? I don't know if you guys get the business text yet, but I'm in that world and I just get, oh, it's so annoying. Um, comment down below if you get text from businesses and you don't like it. Uh, but... Social dilemma. So the number one thing is turn off all notifications. Number two is set a timer on your phone for those apps. So it can, you can only be on for an hour a day. Or, um, you know, there's something on a, uh, I'm going to go to it right now, in settings, screen time. You could set your screen time for certain apps to be, to cut out at a certain time. Um, accessibility, I forget exactly which one it is. Uh, and I don't want to take, oh, screen time. It's on your settings. That's the number one thing. And then you can go to app limits, app limits, and it'll turn off all the notifications. It'll get rid of that little red circle with the number in it. So I'd highly recommend you take off with the app limits. Um, communication limits is basically this page right here where it shows you your, um, social media time and your, uh, settings. Right now, I'm averaging about five hours a day, which is 72% up from last week. I was uh, one of my YouTube videos got um, a little a little viral push, so I had to do a lot of commenting because I'm replying to all comments. You guys know this. I reply to all you guys. I reply to all you guys. But app limits. So number one, turn off all notifications. Number two is turn on your app limits so that you're not on there all the time, and then. Another one is, I might go four or five today. Another one is screen time, just turning your phone off at a certain time. So instead of having um, app limits, have phone limits. Like my downtime where I get no phone calls, it's called do not disturb, it's called downtime on the phone. Um, you could set like from 8 p.m. to six in the morning, downtime. I'm not gonna get a phone call, it's gonna be do not disturb. You can get them, it's just gonna go to your voicemail, like a do, like a do not disturb or something, or like your phone's off. So downtime from like eight to 6, a. 8, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. is gonna help tremendously. Then you're gonna have nighttime with the family or you know to yourself or to your significant other. And then you're gonna have in the morning time to yourself. You're not gonna be distracted by you know what everyone else is doing or what's going on in the world. You can do your stuff in the morning and then get to the day. Let's see if there's any other tips I can give you guys. Number one, turn off all notifications is the biggest one that helped me out so much. This, the app limits. Number two, app limits. Number three, downtime settings on the phone. Number three, downtime. 
uh, which is the do not disturb. I'm not going to put do not disturb as a tip because that's basically downtime. But do not disturb, you can do that whenever you want. Uh, and then let me see if I can find another one. Um, but those are the main three, the notifications, social dilemma, how we can help. And here, here's another one. Um, one of my friends, Stevie, does this, and it's I haven't done it yet, but I'm, I want to end up doing this. But don't sleep with your phone. Keep the phone in another room than where you're at. And I already know it's going to come. I use it as my alarm. Get another alarm clock. You go to Ross or Marshalls or anywhere and get a freaking $5 alarm clock, $10 alarm clock. So I don't want to hear it's my alarm. If you're having troubles with the social dilemma, social media, and you're just constantly on it, get an alarm clock and don't sleep with your phone. Um, so I know a lot of people and a lot of you watching this, some of you watching this, uh, can't sleep very well. Because you're on your phone all night, because you're just in bed, just scrolling, you know, like this, like the phone's about to fall on your face or something. Um, comment down below if you do that. If you sit in your bed like this, and you scroll through your phone, scroll through the feeds, looking at people's stuff, let me know in the comments. I want to see where uh, see where we're at here. But those are my tips. Number one, turn off all notifications. Maybe one to five of the apps that you're using for work. You know, your calendar for your schedule, things like that. Turn off all notifications. Number two is use the app limits on the phone, right? Use the app limits so you're not on the app for too long. Number three is use downtime on the iPhone. So from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m., you're having some downtime to yourself, with your family, you know, with your significant other, to yourself. Uh, that's number three. And then number four was put your phone in another part of the room. You know, have time when you turn it off, put it in a drawer, make some friction. Be like, I have to go over there to get my phone and turn it on and get it out of the drawer that I locked. You're not going to want to do all that just to see who texted you, right? You're not going to do all that to just see who texted you. So put your phone in a place where you're going to have to do some stuff to get it. Like it's friction. Like you're not going to want to do all that stuff to get it, you know? So those are my tips. Those are my four tips on how you can dominate the social dilemma. How about that? Four tips to help you dominate the social dilemma. I like that title, and that's what's gonna be whacked onto this video. Um, again, I'm just starting these, so this would be the uh, portion of the video if you're watching replay. Comment down replay. But this would be the portion of the video where I answer your question, so comment down your question and then maybe I'll answer it next video. I'm gonna give a little head start because I did screenshot a question. So this will be not a little head start, but a little preview of what it would look like. So people would be commenting during the video, right? Their comments, comments, comments. And then I'll go ahead and answer the, uh, answer the questions after my topic, right? But since there's no questions, I screenshot one yesterday. Um, and I'll answer this one. What's the best things you recommend to flatten and cut up your apps? So, What's the best thing you recommend for cutting up and shredding up those abdominals? Well, Paul, the number one thing that I would recommend is get your butt in the kitchen. That's what I recommend. How many times do fitness professionals have to tell people abs are created in the kitchen? In the kitchen. So the foods that you eat, the types of foods that you eat, the quality, the quantity. It's not the quality or the quality. It's the quality and the quantity. It's the portion sizes. It's your exercise activity, your exercise output. How much are you exercising? And how much are you consuming? How much are you bringing in? And how much are you putting out? Right? Just like a banker or an accountant, the good ones know what's coming in and what's going out. The good, you know, People with good relations with their bodies know what's coming in and they know what's going out. And that's why I think a lot of you guys should track your calories, Paul, because you'll be more aware of what you're eating. I don't think you should track for restrictiveness. I think you should track for awareness, okay? Um, so how to get abs is get your butt in the kitchen. I would say, because I'm actually going to give you some tips. I don't want to just be mean to you. But number one, cut your carbs in half. That's a tactical thing you can do right now. And I know if you're trying to get some abs, you're probably already cutting a little carbs, so make sure you're not having zero carbs, but unless you're on keto or whatever. But have 
you know, cut your carbs in half. So if you're having 300, have 150 grams a day, right? If you're having 150 grams a day, have about 70 to 80 grams of carbs a day. It's about 20 to 30 a meal, um, which isn't that much, but you'll definitely get ads from that. And then also just track and make sure that you're not having extra carbs in your drinks that you're having or your coffees or your creamers. Make sure that you're actually having the calories that you think you're eating. Um, and then how to get, you know, your abs just more muscular, do abs with weights. Like, you know, again, I don't, I, I say this hesitantly because I don't want you to, I don't know what stage you're in. I don't want you to hurt your lower back, but you know, do some, do some ball slams, you know, use a little resistance instead of just doing sit-ups, get some ball slams going, you know, get a, a dumbbell and do some Russian twists on the ground, you know, do some V up with some weight, right? Get that weight up to the ceiling. So there's different things that you can do. You strengthen your abs with weight. You go a little lower on the reps. Go lower on the carbs. Cut them in half, 50% of your carbs. And get your butt in the kitchen pole. That's how you flatten and cut up your abdominals. Your abbies. Your abbies. All right? Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, comment down below again if you're watching on replay. And then all those uh, things I commented. And then also what your question is next week. Maybe I'll answer your question if you leave it on the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, be certain in yourself. Be consistent in your actions because consistency is key. See you next video.